All right, so this is uh, this is a talk about ribbon um, and uh, a program, and basically, you know, kind of the way we explain it to people is um, this is how you turn buyers into cash buyers. Okay, um, and when this program first came out uh, years ago, it was really designed for situations to where someone's got a uh, um, a house to sell and they didn't think they could make the sale contingency work, and so um, you know they needed needed help with that. And um, I think I could take these off. I think I'll be able to see. Um, they needed help with that, and so Ribbon, you know, uh, introduced this program to help with that. And well, uh, the market has evolved to be so competitive, and so many cash buyers, which back in 2019 was not really a, a you know, a thing, um, that Ribbon really kind of evolved into, you know what, that's pretty much for anybody. So before we get started, I'm going to tell you that uh, you will want to take a picture of the screen and uh, that's a QR code that will allow you to quickly download um, the uh, web page that you can utilize uh, with Ribbon to submit properties uh, to get the Ribbon value, which we're gonna we're gonna talk about. So um, I'm also gonna put this up at the end of the um, at the end of the video as well. But just take a take a quick picture of it so that you got it. So, um, all right. So what is Ribbon? Uh, Ribbon is a program that allows your buyers to give a guaranteed cash offer to the seller, no contingencies other than the home inspection. Okay. Um, and guaranteed cash offer, that is exactly what, uh, what Ribbon provides. It is a guaranteed sell for the seller. You're going to hear me say that multiple times throughout this. Okay. Um, the ribbon comes in two different forms. There's ribbon boost, okay, which means ribbon doesn't need to purchase the home because the buyer can close on their mortgage. And there's ribbon reserve. That's where ribbon does need to purchase the home because your buyer cannot close on their mortgage. All right, and we're going to get more detailed into this, okay? So all I'm trying to do with this first slide here is to just introduce the idea that there's really two basic forms of ribbon, boost and reserve, and there's a different cost for each one, okay? Um, all right, so what buyers are eligible to use ribbon? Any buyer that actually wants to get a home under contract, okay? <clears throat> That's pretty simple, but uh, okay, but surely you don't mean all buyers, right? Nope, we mean all buyers. We mean first-time home buyers, move-up buyers that have a home to sell, VA buyers, FHA buyers, conventional buyers that don't have the ability to offer an appraisal guarantee, okay? So uh, why do we say VA buyers? Well, we, you know, hear a lot that, well, you know, uh, I've got this buyer that's approved for a VA loan and no seller wants to take it because they're concerned about, you know, the VA loan. <clears throat> so Ribbon can help ease that concern uh, by backing up the offer as a cash, uh, cash offer, okay? Um, and I'm, I'm going to explain all of this and exactly how it works, but I just want you to understand going into this, this is not a program that you're spending your time trying to figure out how to make work for like one out of 10 of your buyers. Um, I, I actually think that you should strongly consider 10 out of 10 of your buyers signing up with Ribbon, okay? Hmm. Um, which buyers don't need Ribbon? Buyers who cannot come up with 2.4% of the purchase price to put down as earnest money, okay? Now, that is legit, all right? If you've got a buyer that is approved for 100% loan-to-value loan, and they literally only have $500 in their bank account, and they can't come up with, you know, more money through a gift or something like that, those buyers truly would, you know, not be eligible for ribbon. And I'll explain why that is, but uh, that would be one. Okay, number two, buyers who are already cash buyers with no home sale contingency, okay? If your buyer is already a cash buyer and they have no home sale contingency, then they don't need to pay ribbon, right? They already have the, the magic ticket, so to speak. We just got to get them a home. 
Um, and then the third category is any buyer that enjoys getting their offer rejected by sellers. So listen, if you've got a buyer that's a glutton for punishment, don't sign them <laughs> up for ribbon because when you sign them up for ribbon and you utilize ribbon, their offer is going to get accepted. Okay. Um, so obviously being a little facetious with that third one, but um, so I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I do not work for ribbon. Okay. Um, I do not get paid anything buy ribbon for someone using ribbon, all right? Um, they don't even take me to lunch, all right? And that's cool. I don't need them to. Um, why am I doing a presentation on ribbon? Well, because uh, last year, I think it was, or maybe it was the end of 2020, um, I recognized the struggle that my uh, realtor partners were having with buyers, getting buyers' contracts um, accepted. And so I started really kind of digging in and researching ribbon, and I was like, man, this, this actually makes sense, okay? Um, and so that's, that's the reason I'm doing this, because I want to share it. I think more people would use Ribbon if they understood Ribbon and weren't concerned about, you know, how does it work? We're going to try to take some of the mystery away from how Ribbon works. It's, it's actually easier than you think, okay? Um, now, and I, I wrote this wrong. It says, what do, oh, well, no, I get, what do realtors not like about ribbon? So <clears throat> there's really two things um, that I have found. Now, you might give me some feedback down the road that, you know, there's more to it, and that's cool. Um, number one, ribbon requires a home inspection, and they do require a home inspection, okay? Um, they do review the home inspection, and if there's any kind of repairs that they feel need to be made, they're going to require that to be done. Now, I, I truly don't have enough experience with that side of the, the deal with Ribbon to be able to tell you like, oh, I've done a thousand of these and here's what they like, here's what they don't like. I don't know, but here's what I, I do know. They are, as a backup, potentially going to be buying this home and they are going to be putting your buyer into this home and there's a bit of a liability that they have putting your buyer into a home with something with potential repair issues. So I'm just going to give an example, but if there's faulty electrical issues, they don't want your buyer going into the home. There being a fire caused by that. And then they're on the hook for it. Right. Because here's the one thing about ribbon. They're backed by Goldman Sachs. People love to sue people that have a lot, a lot of money, right? You assume Goldman Sachs probably, probably has a deep pocket. So, uh, so they are going to protect themselves from a liability standpoint. Um, and then number two, in peak volume times, it might take longer than you want to get the, quote, ribbon value info you need from ribbon to make an offer, okay? Um, so notice I said I think, you know, 10 out of 10 of your buyers need to be signed, maybe 9 out of 10, because there's going to be some that can't come up with the earnest money, but um, need to be signed up with ribbon. I did not say 9 out of 10 of your buyers need to use ribbon every presentation. I don't think that's true necessarily. I think you need to have that as an option for your buyers if they are open to, you know, doing the ribbon deal. So um, that's, that's my thought process. And so that's why I'm doing this. So, um, all right, that sounds great, but what does it cost? All right. Ribbon boost is 1% of the purchase price. Ribbon reserve is 2.4% of the purchase price plus the ro prorated rent amount that your client would uh, pay to Ribbon if Ribbon buys the home, okay? So what do we mean by that? Well, if Ribbon doesn't have to buy the home, which I'm going to explain, you know, how that would take place, but if they don't have to buy the home, they're going to charge your client a 1% fee, okay? So here's the most simple way to think about it. If you have buyers that want to purchase a home, they can pay 1% of the sales price and become cash buyers, that's, that's the easiest way to think about it. Now, for some people, they hear that and they go, oh, well, that's expensive, right? So let's say it's a $500,000 house. Um, that's a $5,000 fee, right? For some people, that's like, well, that seems expensive. But here's the thing. If you have a buyer that's not a cash buyer, buying a $500,000 home, competing with cash buyers, what's the chances that your buyer is going to get it under contract only offering $500,000? I don't think very good. As a matter of fact, I think you're going to be encouraging your buyer to offer 520, 515, maybe 525, maybe 550. Regardless of the yeah. yeah appraisal. Yeah, to compete 
with the cash buyers. Okay, so if we just accept that that's probably going to be the case, one percent to become a cash buyer doesn't seem so expensive. Okay. No. Nope. <clears throat> now, ribbon reserve two point four percent. That's where ribbon has to buy the home. Okay. Now that most likely is a scenario where I got a home to sell and I can't get it sold, and I need ribbon to go ahead and buy the home. So at that point, that's a little different deal where you know you kind of have to go to your client and go, hey, look, you ain't you ain't buying a home without this. So you know if you're if you're good with the cost, then great, let's let's rock and roll. Um, if if you're not good with the cost, then you just have to understand that it's going to be pretty limited on what you're going to be able to get under contract. Um, so if if you start thinking about, hey, there's limited inventory to begin with, and now we're going to take 80% of those off the table, you might be left with options to where you end up paying way more than 2.4% anyway, right? I mean, that's that's kind of the way I uh, I look at it. So, uh, but again, ribbon boost is just where they they back your offer. It's one percent. Ribbon reserve, they end up buying the home. The the cost is 2.4%. Now, they your buyer pays rent. We're going to talk about all that, but that's just you know, basic way of thinking about it, okay? Um, no, seriously, what does it really cost, right? That seems too simple. All right, so I've given you four different scenarios. The first one, if your client doesn't get the offer on the home, your client will pay nothing, okay? So if you sign your client up with Ribbon, if you get the Ribbon value from Ribbon, you get the addendum, you get it signed, you put that with your offer, and the your offer gets rejected for whatever reason. You know, they take a different offer. Your client owes zero dollars to Ribbon, okay? Second scenario, if your client gets the offer on the home but backs out of the offer during the inspection period, your client will pay the home inspection fee, right? I mean, assuming that they did a home inspection. I guess, in theory, they could back out before they actually did the home inspection. But if they did the home inspection, they pay a home inspection fee. There's no other charges, okay? They'll get a full refund of their earnest money. Ribbon requires the inspection period. That's Ribbon's opportunity to back out. That's your client's opportunity to back out, all right? Third scenario, if your client gets the offer on the home and Ribbon does not need to purchase the home because your client was able to close on their mortgage, your client will pay 1% of the purchase price as a fee to Ribbon and the home inspection fee. Now, the reason I'm specifically putting the home inspection fee in there is, remember, Ribbon required the home inspection. So to even get to that point, your client would have already paid for it, all right? The fourth scenario, if your client gets an offer on the home and Ribbon does need to purchase the home, meaning your client cannot close on their mortgage for whatever reason, your client will pay 2.4% of the purchase price as a fee to Ribbon, home inspection fee, because again, to get to that point, you would have already done the home inspection. Um, and then your client will also pay the prorated rent as determined by Ribbon, and we'll talk about this, but Ribbon tells you this on the, on the front end. Um, and so basically, they're going to rent the home from Ribbon until they're able to purchase the home from Ribbon. And then they're going to pay the typical buyer closing cost when they purchase the home from Ribbon at a later date. <clears throat> um, and then they're going to pay the ribbon cash plus fees if applicable. We're going to talk about cash plus, so just kind of set that to aside for a second. So let's let's kind of unpack this. The fee is 2.4% to ribbon. Home inspection fee because they did a home inspection. The rent is they're going to rent the home from ribbon until they turn around and buy the home from ribbon. Okay, um, and then typical buyer closing cost when they purchase the home from ribbon at a later date. Now. When Ribbon buys the home, the client doesn't pay any closing costs at that first closing because your client didn't buy the home. Ribbon did, right? Ribbon stepped in and said, we're going to buy the home. So there's no fees that your client pays other than, again, they would have paid the home inspection fee. There's no fees they pay related to closing. <clears throat> Down the road, when they buy the home from Ribbon, they're going to purchase the home from Ribbon for what Ribbon paid for it. So Ribbon doesn't add anything to it. They don't come back and go, well, you know what? The market's really gone up since then, and we can sell it to someone else for 40000 more. No, they're going to sell it to the client for what they paid for it. Um, and then the client is going to rent the home from Ribbon during that time period. When you sign your client up with Ribbon and when, when you submit a property to Ribbon and Ribbon comes back and tells you what you know, they're willing to let you offer on the house, 
and I'm going to explain all this, at the same time, they tell you what the rent is going to cost. So at that time, just up front, even before you bring Ribbon into the deal, your client's like, oh, they're crazy. I'm not paying them that much per month. Don't use Ribbon. No harm, no foul. All right. So how does this work? All right. There's going to be, I think, three or four slides that, you know, we're going to take it step by step. All right. Your buyer gets pre-approved for a mortgage. That is a requirement for Ribbon to be in play. Um, your buyer is registered with Ribbon by their lender or by you. Okay, so like I have a login with Ribbon. So if I've got a buyer that says, yeah, I want to I want to do this Ribbon thing, I can sign them up with Ribbon. It's real basic what I do too. I mean, if I remember correctly, it's like name, email address, phone number, and uh, I put the details of their loan, just you know the highlights. Here's what they're approved for, um, all that all that jazz, and then I'm gonna put who their buyer's agent is. Ribbon won't work with a client unless they have a buyer's agent. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to put who the buyer's agent is, and then Ribbon's going to reach out uh, to, uh, to you and the client and kind of explain what's going on. When I upload the, uh, or I guess register the client with Ribbon, I upload their approval letter. Ribbon does send me an email. It says, hey, I need to make sure, have you verified credit, income, and assets? And then they always add to there. Is there any reason other than sale of home or whatever the reason is that they wouldn't be able to, to buy the home? And then I just email back and go, yes, 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 I verified. No, there's no other reason. All right, cool. That's really all they do. Um, and then, like I said, they're going to reach out to you. You're going to have a representative. Um, and I would imagine they probably try to line up the reps to where, you know, if you've got three buyers, you're probably just going to have one rep. But regardless, every buyer is going to have a rep. Um, and they're going to explain any questions, you know, answer questions, stuff like that about the, about the program. Now, at this point, you've not submitted any properties to them. They're just signed up to be eligible to work with Rivet, okay? No cost. Like, there's no app fee. There's no nothing. They don't charge anything. They don't uh, take a credit card. Um, all right. So when you find a home for your buyer, you're going to submit that address to Rivet because you want to find out three things. You want to find out what the ribbon cash value is. That's one. What the ribbon cash plus value is. And the third thing you want to find out is how much is the rent going to be if ribbon does purchase the home. Okay. And we're going to talk about ribbon cash value and ribbon cash plus value. But those are basically three things you want to know in every home. All right. So um, if your buyer chooses to use ribbon, you download the ribbon addendum and you make the offer to the seller. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ribbon's basically going to tell you the, the values, the rent, and then you're going to say, all right, cool. You download the addendum that goes with your sales contract, um, and basically that's how you're letting the seller know that Ribbon's involved in the deal, and they're going to back up the cash offer, all right? Um, I am going to, real quick, kind of stop and say, okay, you signed your client up with Ribbon, there's a home that you want to make an offer on. You submit it to Ribbon, and um, they generally say, I think, that it takes about 24 hours to hear back on the values. In the meantime, you get word from the listing agent that, hey, look, I, I think we're about to accept some offers. I need, I need your offer quick. Look, you don't have to use Ribbon. Just make the offer, right? Like, that's no different than had you not signed up for this seminar and known anything about Ribbon to begin with, right? You just make your offer like normal. But – Let's say that like you get that call, like, hey, you need to go ahead and make your offer. And then five minutes later, you hear back from the listing agent, like, oh, you know, and of course you're laughing because you're like, well, listing agent wouldn't have called the first time, much less twice. But they call you back and they go, oh, you know what? The seller had a seizure and they went to the hospital. We're putting this on pause for two days, okay? In the meantime, Ribbon comes back to you and gives you a value and you decide you do want to use Ribbon to sweeten the pot, so to speak. Now you're in play with Ribbon. Again, every one of your buyers should be signed up with Ribbon. It doesn't hurt anything to do that. It puts you in a position to potentially sweeten the offer. But you can, you can work on the fly. You can, you can think you're going to use Ribbon and then realize, oh, you know what? We've got to go ahead and get this submitted and just, just roll on without Ribbon, right? All right. So um, you make the offer to the seller. If your offer is accepted, your buyer puts down 2.4% towards the earnest money, and then you order the home inspection. All right, now, this 2.4% towards earnest money, this is really important. So this is why I said on the very front end, if your buyer doesn't have 2.4% to put down towards earnest, they're not a candidate for ribbon. 
Um, this is how Rivet ensures that they get paid their 2.4% in the event that they need to purchase the home. Okay, um, that is really key. They have to put down 2.4% towards earnest money. All right, if your buyer backs out of the contract during the home inspection period, deals off, your buyer gets a refund of their 2.4%. If Riven backs out of the contract during the home inspection period, deals off, and your buyer gets refund of their 2.4%, or you can amend the contract to remove Riven and continue on with the purchase without Riven. Now, let me tell you, and I mean, this has literally happened with, uh, uh, I think, two of my clients. Um, so you're into the deal. You do the home inspection. The home inspection comes back, and Riven says, yeah, we don't like this, this, and this. And the seller says, yeah, I'm not fixing this, this, and this. And your buyer says, well, I don't mind this, this, and this. So how do we fix this? You can most likely go to the listing agent and say, hey, listen, we're kicking Riven out. They don't want to be a part of this deal. We're kicking them out. But my buyer's still good to go. You know, we're still going to close in two weeks. We're, you know, they're, we're still moving forward with everything. How about we just, just move on? Just take Riven out and let's keep going. Most times, I'm not going to say every time, but most times that listing agent's going to go, I don't really want to start over. I mean, do you think they really want to field 20 more offers and pour through those? And no, I mean, so here's the reality. In that situation, you probably only got the offer because Ribbon was involved. Now Ribbon backs out. You kick him out. The seller still wants to roll forward. Now you don't even have to pay the 1% to Ribbon. You, you're still getting your deal. Okay. Now, there's other benefits of using ribbon that, you know, potentially you're losing out on. But the moral of the story is you got that – you got to that point because you had somebody backing you up as cash, okay? But in that scenario, I'd say most times you can negotiate that and still keep it going. You may not, right? The seller might go, nope, the only reason I took this offer is because it was a backup cash. I'm moving on to something else. Most sellers I don't feel will do that. Now, I could be wrong, but – I my opinion on that so all right um what once the inspection period is cleared this is a guaranteed closing for the seller i'm going to say that again once the inspection period is cleared this is a guaranteed closing for the seller okay this is why ribbon is you know a, a benefit to the seller because once the inspection period is cleared this is a guaranteed closing for the seller. And I know what you might be thinking. Well, yeah, but you cleared the inspection, but you didn't clear the appraisal. All right. So let's talk about, like, potential scenarios. If your offer to the seller was at the ribbon cash amount or lower, and the appraisal comes in lower than the sales price, ribbon will pay the seller the difference between the appraised value and the sales price on the contract up to the ribbon cash amount, okay? So there's two, uh, there's two scenarios that um, the, um, uh, there's two values that ribbon gives you on the front end. One is the ribbon cash, one is ribbon cash plus, okay? The ribbon cash value is the one that they are guaranteeing, hey, look, you're not gonna even have appraisal issues with this because we'll make up the difference, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's that's one value, and we're going to look at some scenarios uh, of you know cash versus cash plus, okay? But and and remember, you can't go above the value that Ribbon's giving you anyway without your buyer being able to make up the difference. Meaning, if you get to this point, that means that the sales price you negotiated is already within the values that Ribbon is comfortable dealing with. All right, this that's that's an important part of this. All right. So, for example, if Ribbon says, well, you know, we'll let you go up to 350 and you want to offer 600, guess what? You wouldn't have been – Ribbon would not be involved at this point because they would have told you on the front end not doing it, right? So to get to this point, the values are already within Ribbon's parameters. Um, the only difference between Ribbon Cash and Ribbon Cash Plus is, is your buyer going to have to participate in part of it or not? If the value stays within Ribbon Cash Plus uh, – Cash, not Plus, but Cash – your buyer doesn't have to participate if it's low appraisal, okay? All right, second scenario. If your offer to the seller was at the ribbon cash plus amount or lower and the appraisal comes in lower than the sales price, ribbon and or your buyer will pay the difference between the appraised value and the sales price on the contract, okay? 
So we say and or your buyer, we're going to get into, you know, how your buyer would participate in that. But to make a long story short, ribbon cash plus value is the higher value, okay? So you wouldn't be dealing with ribbon unless the sales price you negotiated with the seller was fit under ribbon cash plus or ribbon cash, okay? Either scenario, ribbon has it lined up to where they're going to pay them and or your client is going to pay the difference between the appraised value and the sales price because, again, the sales price has to fit under those two. So either one of those scenarios still closes. Did I mention this was a guaranteed closing for the seller? That's what I mean. For you to get to this point, it's a guaranteed closing for the seller. Okay? If your client at this point says, well, I'm not buying this house, that's fine. Guess what? Ribbon will still buy the house. Now, remember, your client's going to lose the 2.4% earnest money, but Ribbon will still buy the house. This is a guaranteed closing for your seller. I cannot stress that enough. Okay? That's why sellers like Ribbon. <clears throat> All right, so at this point, one of two things will happen. Your buyer will close on their mortgage and purchase the home in their name. They'll get a refund of 1.4% of their earnest money unless they owed anything for the appraisal gap, which we're going to talk about that. So, so why 1.4%? Well, remember, they put up 2.4%, and the fee to ribbon is 1%. The difference is 1.4%. That's what they get credited at closing. <clears throat> the second thing that will potentially happen is Ribbon will have to purchase the home for your client, rent it to them, and then sell your client the home for the same purchase price they paid for the home. Your buyer will not get any of the 2.4% refunded to them. Your buyer will then pay the normal buyer closing cost when they purchase the home from Ribbon down the road. Your buyer will pay rent to Ribbon until they purchase the home from Ribbon. Okay, so again, that's why Ribbon requires a 2.4% earnest money. That's how they ensure they get paid. They will not move forward with the transaction if your client doesn't pay 2.4% towards earnest money. Okay? Um, if Ribbon purchase the, purchases the home and your buyer decides not to purchase the home back from Ribbon, they'll forfeit the 2.4% earnest money, any rent they've paid, and uh, they've got to give Ribbon a 30-day notice. Now, this is where I'm going to say any questions you got about that scenario, you need to talk to Ribbon because I don't work for Ribbon. So I'm, just, I'm telling you what my research has told me. Okay, um, so again, you pass the inspection period, that's why we say it's a guaranteed closing for seller at that point, because in any scenario you come up with, that home still sells. That's a very, very important point to remember, all right? Um, all right, so tell me more about ribbon cash value and ribbon cash plus value, because this is kind of where the rubber meets the road, all right? So, Here's how it works, and, and I've pulled these screenshots, these next few screenshots, directly from a presentation that Ribbon did, okay? So how it works is this. You submit a property to Ribbon. They're going to give you two values. They're going to give you the Ribbon cash value and then the Ribbon cash plus value. So let's say sales – well, let's say the list price is 400 and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in best-case scenario point of view, but, you know, it's just to explain it. Let's say Ribbon comes back to you and says, well, the, the Ribbon cash value can be 405, okay? The Ribbon cash plus value can be 425. And you talk to your client, and your client says, well, you know, I'm, I'm cool with offering 405, but I don't really want to go over that anyway. And I'm, I'm okay with, you know, bringing Ribbon into the deal. Okay. And let's say they don't have a home to sell, so the, the assumption is Ribbon won't be buying the home, your client will be. So... You offer 405, you get it under contract, okay? Um, and the uh, appraisal comes back in. Your client's doing a mortgage. Appraisal comes back in, and it appraises for 400000 The ribbon cash value was 405 What you negotiated the price to be was 405 Ribbon's going to reimburse the seller for $5,000. Your buyer is going to buy that home at $400,000. Because remember, it appraised for four hundred, so the sales price has to has to come down. Um, your client's not out the five thousand dollar difference. All right, <clears throat> the ribbon cash plus value was four twenty five. Your client goes, well, I know the the cash value or ribbon value was 
uh, 405, but I really want to sweeten the offer. Let's, let's kick it up to 420. I really want this house. Okay. If the home appraises for 400, there's a $20,000 appraisal gap. At that point, your client is going to have to participate in some of the difference. Okay. So, um, the uh, two different options are uh, pay now or pay later, okay? And again, this is only Brib and Cash Plus. So this is only when you want to push the lower value that they gave you, all right? Um, so Cash Plus is uh, either pay now or pay later. So if you pay now, you're going to pay $250 for every thousand above Ribbon's value, okay? So uh, above the ribbon value, excuse me. So to go back to, um, I probably won't figure this out because I'm not that, oh, look at there. So if the home appraised for 400 and the ribbon value was 405 and the sales price you negotiated was 420, then there's a $15,000 difference between the ribbon value and the sales price that got negotiated. Ribbon is going to pay 100% of that $5,000 difference between the 400 and the 405. Because basically they told you on the front end, we got you covered up to 405, right? So they're going to pick up that first 5,000 completely. The $15,000 difference between the ribbon value and the negotiated sales price of 420, that's where your client is going to have to pay $250 for every thousand. Okay, so basically 25% of that difference, so I never try to math in my head because it always turns out bad, 3750 okay? So basically your client would owe 3750 if they do pay now. And they do have to decide that on the front end. That's something they, they come up with on the front end. Um, if they pay later, then uh, the way they do it is there is, and I don't think Ribbon calls it a lien. I don't know how they don't call it a lien because I don't know how it wouldn't be a lien. But anyway, they, they put something on the, the property. Let's just call it a lien for lack of a better way of saying it. That um, will prevent your client from either selling the home or doing a cash out refinance until they pay Ribbon back. So they can, they can pay him back as part of the cash out refinance. But Ribbon is going to recoup. 25% of the home price appreciation at that time, okay? So if the home appreciated at a clip of $100,000 at the time that the, the buyer, you know, sells the house and the buyer chose the pay later option, the buyer is going to pay ribbon $25,000, okay? So I would suspect a lot of buyers do the pay now option because most people today probably look at it and say, well, I think home prices are going to continue to go up. And so their cost to pay back ribbon is going to be higher. Now you got to understand that the ribbon's not trying to gouge anybody, but they don't know if it's going to be 20 years down the road before that event happens. Right. And so like, they don't know, are they out that money for 20 years? Are they out that money for six months? They just don't know. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the pay later, um, pay, pay later thing. And you can see on there, this is ideal for homes less likely to under appraise buyers who are tight on cash up front, but okay to pay back later in order to win their dream home. So again, you know, buyer has to, has to make that decision. But, um, so here's an example of the, uh, cash plus and the person chooses to pay now. Okay. So in this case, the ribbon value was 300. And the contract value was 307, okay? Um, and the, um, let's just say that the home appraised for 300,000. So there's a $7,000 shortfall. The buyer's gonna pay 25% of that, which, just make sure my math is right, but that's 1750. The buyer pays 1750 on the front end, plus the 1% of the purchase price, because remember, they're, they're buying the homes. So they only owe ribbon 1%. Um, so it'd be 1% plus 1750. That's what they participate in. Okay, so that's the pay now uh, scenario. Um, the pay later scenario, um, in this case, um, the ribbon value was 5,000. The contract value, so the sales price was 315. It appraised for 300, okay? So 
ribbon is going to this is uh this is pay later um original shortfall amount. okay i see what they're saying here so um the original shortfall amount was ten thousand and the uh the difference between and so remember the ten thousand is um the uh, the difference between 305 and 315. So understand, the actual shortfall between the appraisal and the sales price was actually 15,000. Ribbon's going to pay this because they told you on the front end you were good up to 305. So there's only a difference between um, uh, the ribbon value and the contract value. So the buyer owes $10,000 plus 25% of the home price appreciation. In this example, they're saying the home price appreciated for 20,000. So 25% of 20,000 is 5,000. The total repayment amount is 15,000. So actually, let me clarify something I said earlier. I said that the, the buyer on the pay later option would pay back 25% of the appreciation. It's actually 25% of the appreciation plus the original shortfall amount, okay? Um, and again, your buyer will have all this information presented to them on the front end. So they can, they can know all this, they can you know, make an informed decision before using ribbon. Um, and they can choose to do the pay now option. So, and, and again, and I can't stress this enough because I think a lot of times we have a tendency to go, well, that seems too complicated. So I don't know if I need to use ribbon. You could always just stick with the ribbon value and you can always not use ribbon if you don't, you know, like the ribbon value. But if, if your buyer was going to make an offer of 305 anyway, and they're okay with bringing ribbon into the deal and ribbon gives you a value of 305, uh, a ribbon value of 305, and you're not trying to go above that anyway, I mean, it's no brainer to use ribbon, right? I mean, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I go back to every buyer needs to be signed up and then throw it out there with them. Say, hey, all right, what's my ribbon value for this? What's my max ribbon value for this? There'll be some transactions that you'll go, yeah, we don't need use ribbon on this one. And there'll be others that you'll go, you know what? It fits. So we can, we can boost our offer. We can become a cash buyer. The ribbon value protects our client. You know, there's just, and, and, and remember, you know, even if you think, well, I need to go up um, an additional $4,000 over the ribbon value and I need to offer 309. Well, if you do the pay now option, your client only owes 25% of that. That's just a thousand bucks. So then you can go to your client and go, hey, look, you can go up to 309 and if it only appraises, if it appraises for under 305, then or 305 or less, then you're gonna owe an additional thousand dollars. Are you okay with that? Again, I can't stress this enough. We're comparing a situation where probably your client would have been offering 330 to begin with scared to death that they're going to lose out to a cash buyer. So the cost to become a cash buyer <clears throat> is not, not overly tremendous. So, um, all right, I'm going to give you another opportunity to, uh, to scan that and uh, take a picture of it. I, of course, I'm going to be sending this out, so I can, I can send you that as well. So with that said, I'm going to stop sharing, and uh, does anybody have any questions? That makes sense, Sheila? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it cleared up a lot of things, a lot of questions I had. It was some good info. Yep. Yeah. And like I, like I said, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be sending this out. Uh, so uh, anybody else, Teresa, any questions? No questions over here. It sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, is that different from uh, what you thought previously about Ribbon? Or is that pretty much what you have heard before? Well, I did hear about the repairs and everything. And um, what I've heard some agents say that the buyers actually made the repairs and moved forward. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, there's, there's creative ways you can, you can get around it. But the um, one transaction in particular that I had to where basically they kicked ribbon out of the deal, um, you know, at the time, I thought, ooh, that's, that's kind of weird. But then I got to thinking about it. I was like, you know, it, it actually worked out pretty well because the buyer was like, I'll do this stuff after closing. The loan wasn't going to have an issue with, um, you know, with the repairs that came up. And, again, the agents were able to keep the seller into the deal 
because they basically said, hey, we're pretty much already there anyway, you know. Um, and in this case, I'm wanting to say we even had an appraisal waiver, which obviously helped because they're like, hey, look, we're not even going to get an appraisal. The lender's already said that, you know, there's an appraisal waiver. So um, it, it, the, now, the how, way – How do you work in with this? Me? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm doing a loan for the buyer, and typically the buyer's getting a mortgage, so therefore um, I would be doing a loan for my client. Um, so yeah, I, I get what you're really asking. So they're a bridge. Is, so they're a bridge. Right? They're a bridge line. Ribbon is a bridge. Bridge line. Yeah, yeah. So it, you know, what you're thinking is, okay, well, why are you doing this this seminar? Because you have buyers who are getting rejected from sellers. This yeah. is a benefit to you. And I, I always give full disclosure. So here, here's my thought process. If I make it easier for you to get your buyer's contracts accepted, you probably like me a little bit, and you're probably more likely to send buyers to me. And that's what I get paid to do, right? So so when, so when we send the inspection to Ribbon, Ribbon doesn't share it with you. Nope, I don't care a thing in the world about that inspection. Don't okay. want to see it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't work with Ribbon. Like, you know, I had a deal closed with Ribbon uh, that Ribbon was a part of three three months, uh, well, a few weeks ago, sorry. I don't know who the Ribbon rep was. Had nothing to do with me. You know, the agent worked all that out. All I'm doing on the front end when situations like this is I'm just, I'm telling you about it. And I will say this, um, I don't currently bring up Ribbon to buyers, Okay. Um, I'm going to try to do a better job to bring it up to the realtor when we pre-approve somebody and say, hey, just so you know, uh, they might be a good candidate for Ribbon. I try to respect my realtor partners to the extent that, you know what, maybe you don't want to deal with Ribbon, right? And maybe you don't want to open that can of worms with this client. Maybe there's a legit reason why, not that you're trying to hide something from them. So I don't, I don't really typically bring it up with buyers. Now, they might see a Facebook post of mine that talks about Ribbon, and they may ask about it. Um, but my goal really is to make sure you understand that it's an option and a really good option and then help, you know, provide some details to your buyers if that's what you choose. But you know what? If you don't want your buyer to do Ribbon, that's fine. I don't care. Like, it, I, I don't get paid for them using Ribbon one way or the other. But it is a tool that you can use to help mm -hmm. grow your business. And so I want to present that to you. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. I'm not going to take up all y'all's time. I know y'all have sales calls you can make. So uh, oh, I will send you. out uh, I'll send out a, a, a recording of this, a link. You know, for it. And like oh, I said, good. I am I am also going to try to really kind of condense two 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 videos condensed down, um, zipping through this information so that you can share it with uh, your clients if you choose, or uh, another agent if you're trying to you know get a deal secured. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Great job, Greg. Thank you very much. All, All right, right. I appreciate you guys, and uh, we will follow up with you. Sounds okay. great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.